the third chapter of Amruta Anubhav is Vacha Runa Parihar, meaning repaying the debt of speech. There are four speeches, Para, Pashyanti, Madhyama and Vaikari. Shri Mataji says, the speech that comes out of our throat has its source in our Muladhar, that is the sacrum bone which is situated at the bottommost part of our spine. There it is called Para. When the same speech rises to the Anahat Chakra, it is called Madhyama. When it reaches Vishuddhi, it is called Pashyanti. And when it comes out of the throat, it is called Vaikhari. Because of these speeches, we can speak, we can think, we can express our feelings. These speeches do us many favors. It is because of these favors that these speeches exercise authority over us and bind us into several bondages such as our desires, thoughts, beliefs and habits. So these favors must be repaid, otherwise we can never be free from these bondages. One cannot become free from the bondage of speeches by simply becoming silent, because even a silent person has all these bondages. In the second chapter, it is said that Sri Jnanadeva paid off the debt of these four speeches by performing Guru Vandana. Now in the third chapter, he explains why these favors cannot be repaid by doing anything else. No matter how much one roars, blabbers or gives sermons, this debt does not get repaid. Even if one's awareness seems to be awakened about the spirit, sleep or ignorance is hidden in that awareness. Generally, these four speeches assist the soul to attain moksha or salvation. But because of ignorance, human beings commit mistakes. As soon as the body dies, the limbs also die. When the mind dies, the senses also die. When the sun sets, the rays of the sun also disappear. Dreams fade out and sleep comes to an end. Likewise, the four speeches shrink and ignorance comes to an end. When iron is heated, it turns into a molten liquid. When fuel burns, it takes the form of fire. Although salt dissolves in water, it continues to exist as saltiness. When we wake up, sleep continues to exist as tiredness in our eyes. Similarly, it may seem that ignorance has perished and the four speeches are inactive. But the moment a philosophical topic comes up, they shoot up and the man starts talking, thinking and analyzing. It is only after conquering the speeches, that is, completely eliminating our perceptions, reactions, doubts, prejudices and the habit of analyzing, that one should start talking about philosophy. Even if this is done, the light of philosophy in our awareness remains quite faint, as it is accompanied by the idea that I have conquered the speeches. Sleep gives us dreams. And when it becomes inactive, we wake up and become aware of reality. In both these states, it is the same sleep that takes either the form of dreams or of reality. The same is true of ignorance. While it is alive, we commit mistakes. And when it dies, it takes the form of knowledge and forces us to abstain from all kinds of mundane things. Dead or alive, ignorance binds us in one way or the other. While alive, it binds the soul to karma and when dead, it binds the soul to moksha. Although moksha liberates one from the cycle of life and death and karma, it puts us into the bondage of inactivity. If even moksha is a bondage, then what is the point of calling it moksha? Only those who are ignorant fancy it and yearn for it. When children are told, that the boogeyman has died, they rejoice and feel relieved. But what is the point of rejoicing when we know that the boogeyman doesn't exist? If an imaginary pot were to break, would we be sad about it? Likewise, what is the point of lamenting that I have not yet attained moksha? Because even after attaining moksha, we are not liberated from the bondage of these four speeches then why should I attain such a moksha? After all, it is the same ignorance that dies and transforms into a new type of bondage called moksha. 
in shiva sutra shri shankara has said that knowledge is also a bondage the lord of vaikuntha has also said that sattva guna ties the soul with the bondage of knowledge it is not that i say this because shri shiva or shri krishna have said so this is my own experience those who have the spirit which is the source of absolute knowledge seek knowledge outside this is as absurd as saying that the sun is worried about its strength and thus is seeking strength outside knowledge gathered from outside however impressive is ultimately futile it is like a bright lamp forgetting its own nature and looking for another lamp to enlighten itself what is the point of wandering from place to place searching for something that lies within but even if one were to realize the truth and say that i was unaware of myself now i know that the source of all knowledge is the spirit that lies within me and since i am the spirit i am knowledgeable assuming this and stopping our seeking is also a bondage how can knowledge save us from drowning when knowledge itself has drowned into the ocean of bondage that is why the idea that one can be liberated by knowledge is false on realizing this one's attention goes towards other things like good habits moral behavior and pure thoughts that is one tries to beautify one's personality through the four speeches when this happens ignorance loses interest in the person it enters the fire of knowledge with the destruction of ignorance man becomes knowledgeable but still just as wood burns and remains as ashes ignorance also remains in the form of a subtle ego that i have destroyed ignorance just as camphor disappears when mixed with water but remains as fragrance when the ash applied to the body falls off it still remains as whiteness on the body when a stream of water dries up its moisture remains in the afternoon when the sun is exactly above us it may seem like the shadow does not exist but it does exist right below us even if we manage to eliminate the duality between the subtlety and grossness within us and become masters of ourselves the ego of mastering oneself still remains even death cannot free us from the debt of para pashyanti madhyama and vaikhari but i have become free from this debt by bowing down at the feet of sadguru nivrittinath an ignorant person is bound by ignorance that is he has various flaws like lust anger greed ego and many more even if a knowledgeable person does not have ignorance the subtle ego of being knowledgeable remains therefore it is compulsory for both the ignorant and the knowledgeable to pay off the debt of the four speeches here ends the third chapter these four speeches are like four rich capitalists who lend us money which is expressed in the form of intellect actions thought and behavior we repay this loan by becoming obedient to them this is a bondage sadguru nivrittinath is the master of these speeches and hence when sadguru uses these speeches he does not become indebted to them after all servants can never do a favor to their master therefore if the disciple bows down at the feet of sadguru he too becomes a master of the speeches and is thus free from their debt here bowing down does not mean simply doing the puja of sadguru singing his praises or being obedient to him it means being in advaita or oneness with him a state where even though it seems like there are two separate entities the sadguru and his disciple in reality only one entity exists the sadguru thanks to shri mata ji we know that sadguru nivrittinath was an incarnation of shiva and establishing advaita with shiva is only possible after self realization so let us walk on the path of self realization as taught by shri mata ji so that we can reach the state of advaita and be free from the debt of the speeches jai shri mata ji